we're going to start our project looking at the micro bit. So really the first step in our project is to gather some sort of data from our micro bit, send it via the serial connection to our PC over the USB and have our PC then send that data to a database in the cloud using Firebase. So right now we're just going to concentrate on our micro bit and this is the simple code that you're going to use. Now we're going to use the example of temperature in this video. So over here on the start, I have set up my serial connection. And again, these are just from the serial menu down here on the microbit interface. So I'm just going to redirect all my serial communication over the USB. So transmission over the USB and receiving over USB. I'm going to set my baud rate at 11.5200, which is the speed at which the microbit and the PC are going to communicate. So that's bits per second. And again, we're just going to redirect everything to the USB. So everything's going over the USB. So once that's set up, that connection and the protocols are established, we can actually send some data. So I'm going to choose to send the temperature. Now that's basically under the input that is pre-built into the microbit. So it's very simple. We're going to serial, write number, put in the temperature. And importantly, we're going to put in a, a blank line between temperature readings just so it gives our receiving computer a little gap there to identify the next bit of data. So we're gonna re or write a blank line. And just for our own sake, we're gonna show the temperature also on the display of the microbit, and then we're gonna wait five seconds before we repeat the process and send the new temperature. We're gonna download that code to our microbit, and now the microbit is displaying a temperature and sending that temperature repeatedly over the serial connection. So our next step is to examine the code. So I'm using the Thony editor here. I've installed all my libraries as per the first video, which shows you the technical setup. And now I need to write my Python code to accept that serial communications. So we're gonna need some external libraries to start with. And the first one is we're gonna need our serial library. And we're also gonna need a time library for doing some pausing later on. So here's the important bit and the equivalent of what we did on the micro bit. We're going to create a connection now. I'm going to call mine SER. You can call yours whatever you want. And I'm going to use the serial library to create a serial connection. I'm going to define some parameters about that, con that connection. So I'm going to set the baud rate to the same rate we had on the micro bit, just so there's no misunderstanding. And then we're going to use our port. Now, I know my micro bit was on port COM13. And again, in the first video, we talk about how to find the port number your microbit's connected to and how to solve any issues associated with that. And finally, I'm just going to open that port. So now that port is open for communication. I need a while loop, a constant while loop, to continue reading the data that's coming. Because remember, if you remember from the microbit, we're going to send it every five seconds. And so I create a variable. I'll call mine's microbit data and I'll convert it to a string, and I'm gonna read a line of data from the microbit, just a line. So it's gonna read the line of data from the microbit, again, using the serial connection. We're gonna convert this input into a string, and that string is gonna be saved in a variable called microbit data. We can test that. So if I go print microbit data, uh, we should see some interesting results. So let's run that. So down here in our shell, we can see this is the data that's been returned. And if you wait five seconds, another piece of data is gonna be returned and it's gonna continue on like that. So at the moment, it's reading 25 degrees. But we can all see the 25 in there, which is the temperature reading. But we also have all this unnecessary data and spaces that we'd like to get rid of. So now we have to do a process called cleaning the data. So basically we're going to reformat that string and we're going to get rid of anything we don't need. And it's a pretty straightforward um, technique um, and it uses a couple of lines of code. So the first one we're going to start off with is we're going to take the microbit data, we're going to move it into a different box called temperature. And the temperature is going to get its information from the microbit data file. I'm just going to stop that wrong. And what we're going to do is we're going to just ignore the first two characters. Okay, so this, remember, 
characters start at zero, so we're going to ignore the first two. So if I look down here, in other words, it's going to cut off the first two characters. Start from place number two, so that's zero, one, two. So start from here onwards, and it's going to cut off what came before that. We're going to put that into variable temperature. Now we can print temperature just to check to see how that works. And hopefully this time it won't have that B and uh, single quote. So again, the B single quote's gone, and now we're left with 25, all these spaces, and a couple of escape characters at the end. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reformat it again, and this time I'm going to say make it equal to itself, but replace. And what do I want to replace? I want to replace all blank spaces with nothing. And again, there is a difference between a blank space and nothing, and if I run that, Hopefully we'll see the blank spaces are now gone. Yep, the blank spaces are now gone. Stop that again. A little bit more cleaning up to do. So I'm going to copy that line of code. I'm going to paste it in twice more. Now you'll notice that at the end of, of our string we have a little single quote or apostrophe. I am going to also replace that apostrophe with nothing. And finally, I'm going to replace the slash or slash m. Now, they are what's called escape characters. And again, it's a little bit out of sight or scope, but if we want to replace them, we have to put in two slashes or two slashes n because they are escape characters. So I'm not going to go into the depths of why that is, but an escape character needs to be escaped itself when we're talking about it. But again, that's a little bit too much detail. So let's run that now and hopefully we'll be down to a number. And there we go, 25. Now the only issue with that number is at the moment it's actually a string because just because we've taken stuff away from it, it's still a string. So I'd like now, before we send it anywhere, to convert it into a integer, just because we prefer to deal with our numbers. Let's run that again. It's important to just keep running and keep testing each step of the way. And it looks no different to the last time we ran it, but it is this time an integer. Finally, uh, we can put in, if we want, a time.sleep. It's not totally necessary, but we can make the program sleep before each loop. And finally, outside the while true, I am going to close the serial connection. Now again, that's just good protocol. It's just good to close that serial connection, even if, according to our program, this while loop goes on forever. So very simply, in combination with the microbit code, which you see here, and a short bit of Python code using the serial library, we can read data temperatures, whether it be temperature, humidity, etc., straight over the USB. So in the next video, we're going to work on Firebase database, talking to that Firebase database, and eventually sending this megabit data up to that database automatically.